tell us. Right. Yeah, it, okay, it's recording, everybody. Uh, welcome to Angry Rumi Productions. We are being antisocial this day because, well, the Chinese virus has everybody at home now. Our whole city's in quarantine. And, uh, well... We get face to face. You get to see our ugly mugs really close today. Uh, how's everybody doing on this? Other than what you said, uh, Steve, is your your truck went kind of belly up? No, it's, it didn't go belly up. I, I was just uh, replacing the turn signals because you know they're old, but uh, they weren't. Or they're not working now because they have to have a signal relay uh, for the for the uh, modern LED bulbs, which I don't have. So, so in order for them to work, I have to, you know, if I'm going to signal that I'm going to turn to the right, I have to, you know, click it manually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's messed up. <clears throat> no, I, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm getting all my uh, Call of Duty on. That's about it. But, man, how, how much strange stuff have y'all see around here with people uh, trying to get away from uh, the virus? Not much, really. It's, um, it's really one, weird with this apartment. The strangest thing I've, I've seen is um, going home at 11.30, 11.35, there have been very few vehicles on the road, which yeah. to me is very odd. I find that very pleasant. But, yeah, but you know, this is I 44, and there's traffic all the time. And, and even now, during, during the middle of the day, there's there's very few cars or trucks in the road. Yeah. Well, I've noticed is the last couple of weekends, everybody's been over at my uh, Walmart over on Greenbrier, which will yeah. fall. And now it's it's like it's at night. There's not that yeah. many people there. Yeah. I think that uh, if this thing keeps on going much further, uh, the economy will go into a deep, deep depression, and uh, it it might actually affect the outcome of, of the election. Yeah. And depending, if it does, depending Trump, on who's getting... Uh, yeah. I mean, if they if they even come close to elect, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, I mean, he I, seriously, I'm I'm not concerned him uh, uh, of him as a president. I'm concerning him as a person because it looks like he has very bad dementia, like oh, regular yeah. dementia. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it does. I mean, he's he's not right in the head. Period. Yeah. Well, you know that's. And, that, that kind of goes back to one of those things I've said that we could do to improve our, our government is basically institute a age of an, an age of allowance. In other words, you are allowed to run for government office after the age of 26 and an age, a mandatory age of retirement. Yeah. Well, OK, on, on something like that, I don't think that would be good. I think it would. Well. The people in in the congressional era, yes, and the people in uh, uh, judicial, yes, but – and the president, it's already set up for eight years, but I think you should actually have some kind of uh, uh, mental uh, test to where on, – on all accounts to see – not to see if you're like mentally unstable, but – mentally well, capable you know on, on 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 a very low not high but you know in a middle ground where because uh, uh, on still, average once you once you reach the age of 65 or 70 that's when those problems start to set in and have caused problems but a lot of those people don't have that kind of problem at, at that age they that's just, what i'm saying uh, yeah i just think you know just make sure you don't have to <laughs> Uh oh, there's the virus. No, oh, that's allergies. I know, right? <laughs> I've 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 been playing that one too. But now, uh, another another thing 
is basically what well, well it's like what happened with uh uh Nixon during his term he got he got fucking blackout drunk and he was <laughs> he this is this is documented in him doing it. he got blackout drunk and he's like let's nuke him and every one of his staffs like well let's put a pin on that and see where that ends up and then we'll go We'll we'll just hold this up for another day, and they didn't nuke Vietnam. So that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one thing that I don't understand. I mean, a lot of people do not understand this. People are flawed, and people with a lot of power, they're still going to make stupid decisions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Everybody makes mistakes. It doesn't well, I... matter if you're the smartest person on the face of the planet or the dumbest person on the face of the planet. You're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. But I still think uh, – did you hear about that uh, – uh, what was that new gun control law? Let me see. House Bill 5717. Yeah, the new the new one that just came through that the person yeah. what what what's his name that tried to push that through? I have no all, idea. All I know I don't know it's the guy that thought uh, there's too uh, if we put more troops in Guam that will end up <laughs> island. Yeah, sink in the island. I mean that's yeah. a that's a big <clears throat> case where you shouldn't be in Congress anymore. Especially that that's basically that's basically flowing it out going, hey, guys, uh, he's doing a bill on gun control. Isn't he the same guy that about the island, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> gun violence <laughs> prevention and community safety act of 2020. Yeah, I still uh, I still don't the uh, sheriff's department guy. In Los Angeles, uh, the sheriff in Los Angeles, they're a little, I pulled it out of my ass. Uh, the sheriff's department uh, basically saying that because uh, people are buying guns and everything, they're closing up the gun uh, gun stores because people are going to get cabin fever and they're going to start shooting up people up and everything. And yeah, uh, it, uh, these are people that are. Power to go ahead. What was that? Right. This, is, uh, this is Title One firearm licensing. Uh, no, they're trying to do a. Uh, yeah, it's the one. It's the one where they're trying to uh, set it up to where you have to have a license to buy a gun. You only buy one gun a month. Uh, you're yeah. only limited. To, uh, how many rounds of ammunition you can have? And uh, any you can't you can still build your own uh, weapon. They're trying to get rid of uh, ARs and AKs because they're considered uh, yeah. weapons of war. Yeah. Well, they're hell, not, I got a I got a thirty thirty that's 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 still te- technical as a weapon of war. Well, ARs and AKs aren't weapons of war because they're semi-automatic. They're they're confusing uh, fully automatic weapons with semi-automatic weapons because they look the same. But it says here, except otherwise provided in this section, it should be unlawful for any individual who is not licensed under this section to knowingly purchase, acquire, or possess a firearm or ammo. And individuals should be eligible to receive a license under this section if the individual has attained 21 years of age and has completed training in firearm safety including a written test hands-on testing as part of a process for applying such a license um, submitted to a background and investigation and criminal, hit, and criminal history check to the, uh, the individual including a background check using the National Institute Criminal Background Check System to ensure that the individual is not pre- prohibited from possessing, possessing a firearm under 
subsection G or N of section 922 and has submitted the photograph of the individual uh, has not been determined by court in accordance with subject section C5 the considered rule to be issued a federal firearms owner license and it's not pro otherwise pro prohibited by federal state tribal or local law from possessing a firearm basically it's firearm you know uh, registration and it's also kind of like the, uh, the Jim Crow laws of deep south yeah in order to vote so uh, let's see yeah it's this is this is it's basically the 21st century version of the Jim Crow laws and they were struck down so yeah, it's kind of funny that uh, people apparently don't want those type of laws anymore. Yeah, but they'll, they'll um, they don't want that for the black folks, but they'll do it for everybody who owns a damn gun. Yeah. Well, that's the Democrats for you, really, because they're they're the only ones that are actually trying to push that bill. Say they're for everybody, but they're really just honestly trying to hinder well, like, well, from doing what they want. Well, well, hey, like I was going to say that from the sound of that bill, what they're actually trying to do is reduce the number of people who can say, wait, we want to keep our guns. Mm -hmm. Because quite reasonably if they can say all right if you own a gun you're not allowed to vote anymore then, then those people can't influence the elections and can't influence the policy and the lawmaking anymore and since that yeah, is the majority much. of the populace at this point the only way they're going to make it so that those people can't say hey we want to keep our guns is by making it so those people can't vote yeah the hell is that? Sorry, I'm having uh, issues over here. There we go. What the hell is going on? No, 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 no. He no. wanted to get more comfortable. Like to, I like to see everything. No, it's not more comfortable. Uh, Y'all were freezing up. On me over oh. here. So. And did I grab the mouse? Yeah, I think David was the only one that was actually freezing up, so. Yeah, I'm the only one having trouble. I've turned off everything. I turned off my uh, PS4 and I turned off my TV. So, and my phone. So, give me a sec, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> The host of the show takes a vacation. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, the little bit that I read was just uh, an extremely small snippet of it because there's um, it was from Title One to Title uh, Ten. So yeah, it's just ridiculous, and and to think that these politicians who don't even have a comprehensive ability of why our laws are written the way they are want to change the law well oh, it's, it's got uh it's got uh let's see here secure gun storage by, by owners uh, gun free school zones uh let's see here what else Ban on untraceable and undetectable firearms. That's that's private sales. That's kind of moronic, if you ask me. Prohibition of of uh, possession of certain firearm accessories. That's that's bump stocks. I guarantee it. Uh, no, that's that's actually just that's not bump stocks. That's anything of uh, like uh, the hand, the front grip. Uh, yeah. Oh, extended yeah. clips. Extended clips. Magazines. Yeah. Uh, prohib 
prohibition. Oh yeah, it is. It is Max Payne, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I guarantee you Bar. see it on any news outlet, and they're going to call it an extended clip. And you want yeah. most people to know what you're talking about. You have to use the terminology that those people are using. <laughs> Y'all won't let me do that. Y'all can't do. Uh, you can't allow that either. All right, all right, all right. right on this one. <laughs> firearm. It's got Title Six firearms trafficking. Uh, it's all kinds of stuff. It's, this is the death of the, of the Second Amendment. Yeah, if it passed, but it wouldn't pass. One of those. I don't know. It, no, it, it can't pass. Hope not. Well, you can almost guarantee that if it does pass, somebody can take it to the Supreme Court and argue that it's unlawful and get it struck down. Yeah. If the Supreme Court is doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big if. Well, the Supreme Court right now is half and half, right? Yeah. No, well... Yeah, kind of. Um, there's, I think, so, what nine justices or something? Yeah. There's um, four that are hardcore liberal. Four that are kind of conservative. One who's who's a moderate. So, yeah. <clears throat> but. But held with with the Supreme Court, they uh, they overstep their bounds all the time. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the, the craziest thing I've I've seen was people wearing masks, and they're not understanding the whole point of a mask. Because I've seen I've seen most of them wear like uh, those uh, masks that you wear for uh, uh, doing doing uh, woodworking and in, no insulation. Yeah, yeah. I've seen and, people at the grocery store wearing masks that uh, that are like for surgery and stuff, and that's not gonna help. <laughs> No, what it is is you're not supposed to touch your face. It's more or less, uh, you know, wash your hands. Yeah. And, uh, and keep everything clean that you go on. But, wow. no, uh, a friend of mine if, was telling me. If there's a possibility that you have it, it can reduce the spread because it reduces the uh the plume from your cough or your sneeze if you're wearing a face mask. Yeah, but it also, uh, uh, well, Jason was telling me, because I talked to Jason yesterday, uh, he had a guy that was athletic. He was in his 40s, and uh, he uh, he got the virus, and what killed him and what and this is in most cases what actually does kill a person that has the virus isn't the virus it's the add on to like if you get pneumonia when you have the virus and if you yeah, get if you already have like yeah it's secondary affections that really uh, a, uh, <clears throat> kill a person I, wa- I watched a video a while ago well it's been Two hours ago, that um, <coughs> most of the people that have died from this thing have had ibuprofen in their system from Advil, and uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if it's true or not, but no, there's some, there's a lot of the cases that were, uh, it was anything to combat the fever, which is yeah. aspirin, ibuprofen, Tylenol. Uh, what it does, all those drugs actually just thin out your blood. That's what causes the fever to break down is your blood is actually thinning out. It's the reason why it's not a good idea to actually have alcohol when you have the disease. Uh, unless it's 60, uh, 60% alcohol like whiskey or vodka, 
then it just kills everything. <laughs> uh, well, time, time for a beer run. <laughs> I better run whiskey run. <laughs> Gotta go with the heavy stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah. I mean, uh, our quarantine, you know, they, they deemed that uh, liquor stores are essential. <laughs> no, it, even, even, well, even California, they're considering uh, marijuana uh, stores to be essential. So, of course they are. It's a bunch of hippies out there. Because, you know, that smoker's cough is really inducive to helping the spread. Yeah, I know. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a filter, Michael. You're breathing through a filter. I will defend these people. <laughs> so what are y'all doing to uh, apprehend your mind? Is it just basically a uh, business as usual? Yeah, for me, I'm not, I'm not worried about it at all. Um, I think this has been a man- manufactured crisis as a test run for martial law. And so far, uh, for the, I, I hate to use this phrase, but for the side of freedom, it don't look very good. Yeah. Well, just be- in hindsight, I mean, a lot of people are learning about uh, the gun constricting laws in the heavily gun constricted states and cities. Yeah. Yeah, people so. think they can out in California <clears throat> just go just go to a firearm store and say, "Hey, I want a AR-14 with a Glock 40, and, you know, two thousand round clip, and I want it now." I'm like, well, no, you can't have it now. I got to wait ten days. Yeah. And they're getting pissed off. <laughs> it's all because of damn gun control. Yeah. Well, I was like places in Dallas were talking about. Uh, uh, Dallas was restricting the sales of firearms and closing up the firearm stores there. But the go- uh, Governor Abbott uh, turned around and told them that gun stores are essential, so keep them open. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, you know, if you think about it, everything is essential for the economy. There's yeah. no non-essential business. Yeah, they just have to. What what's happening right now is they're just really just restricting, uh, like dining areas. What's really hurting though is uh, waitresses because they're not getting tips unless the actual people give tips. Uh. Uh, mom and pop short, uh, shops are really hitting it really bad too yeah. because they're not getting any kind of revenue. People are going to the uh, bigger places because they can afford to pay their uh, employees even if some of them are out of work. Yeah. But yeah, scare tactics are like <laughs> on this one. Yeah. It's, it's one of those yeah, things you have to you, you do have to be uh, fearful of the virus, but not to a state of uh, total anarchy. Well, or, the, or not anarchy, really. It's more uh, uh, what's the opposite of anarchy of uh, like major control? Totalitarianism. That, yeah. See, see, this is one of the reasons why I always told everybody I'm not afraid of nuclear war, but I'm definitely afraid of biological war because we have an outbreak like this, and it proves what I've told people. You know, the first things you're going to start seeing shut down or you're going to start seeing things fly off the shelves that aren't necessarily no. needed to go, and then you're not going to be able to get stuff. And then they're going to start shutting down your cities a little bit at a time until eventually they shut down the major roadways. Yeah, luckily it's just the National Guard, so we should be okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those Humvees don't have keys in them, and National Guard aren't known to be like the most intelligent of people. But if I happen worried. to be rolling into a new uh, in a Humvee, I just want y'all to know I'm gonna bling that mofo out. 
<laughs> Put some speakers on it. But yeah, I mean, our national supply lines can't handle the shock of panic buying. Well, another thing, another thing that's happening right now is we're realizing how much dependent we are on other countries, and that's that was one of uh, Trump's selling points, and it was even I think it was uh, uh, Bush seniors uh, when he was voting into the uh, presidencies. Uh, everything is going overseas, and none of it's being manufacturing here. And especially, uh, I think we lost him again. Are made by China, and they even said yeah. that uh, because it's an American virus that uh, came out, uh, it came out of America, even though everybody knows it came out of China. But what what they're saying is, is they literally said it's like we're gonna stop production on your medical supplies yeah <clears throat> I, I i'm still not entirely certain how the hell they came up with the idea that it came out of the united states when the whole rest of the world can say it started there well it's there they want to control the narrative because that's what they can control when they're in their own country and when everybody else is in a state to where, no, all this stuff has already been proven that it came from you. No, 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 no. Don't look at the past. Look at what's happening right now. It was America. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's another thing. Uh, the president has uh, deemed fit to uh, try to uh, change up. He's getting a lot of the businesses to, um, especially for the medical supply, to be made in the uh, house or uh, USA. So we're not going to have that big of a problem. Another thing is I, I've noticed there's a lot of uh, anti-gun uh, videos trying to tell people Hey, don't buy guns like you are right now because we're in a um, big crisis. You need to uh, buy fruits and vegetables from a mom and pop shop to keep them up in business. Which, I mean, if I had to choose which mom and pop shop I want to keep open, I'm going to keep the gun store open. (laughs) But that's me being bipartisan on that one. Yeah, quite quite frankly speaking, uh, in a time like this where you've got people openly saying, I can't get what I want at the store, so I'm just going to go rob my neighbor, I think having a gun is kind of important. Yeah. But that's, that, that's what a lot of people don't understand is there's a fine line between uh, safety and the fact that Hey, I want to secure what's mine. I don't care about what you're go- doing over there as long as it's nothing stupid and Ill- illegal. Just don't come over to my area and do whatever you need you think you want to do. Yeah. But I don't know what what else do you want to talk about on this one? Cuz there's really – I mean what a lot of people don't understand is they're basically make. I mean it's, it's for the good of uh, spreading the virus, but they're pretty much – I'm really surprised that they didn't – they're not going to try to do what they did like uh, during Katrina and go door to door and uh, 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 get people's uh, weapons from them and everything. Well, if they do that, there will be civil war instantly, especially in the South. Yeah. Well, well, that's what happened uh, during Katrina is they took a lot of – they broke into – police department broke into other people's houses and uh, basically robbed them of the right to protect themselves. Yeah. Wow. Well, 
they did that in the affluent areas where there's no flooding, no damage, and uh, no no riding or or you know people looting. And I, I don't for the life of me get why they didn't fight back. Yeah. Well, that's the mentality of uh, most people, and a lot of people don't understand that is when it comes around to it, very few people are the type of people that stand up against people. Yeah. Those are your alphas or whatever you want to call them, alphas, leaders. Uh, but most of those people actually, when, when they stand with those types of people, they stand with them because it's herd mentality, which yeah. is very sad that they can't get away from that. The, the people that are the leaders and actually push to, uh, say, Hey, this isn't right. You should be all, uh, with me. Some of those people go with you, but it's still that herd mentality to, to the point to where, hey, uh, we should follow that guy because he's saying stuff that's right. And no one can be their uh, own individual that much anymore. Yeah. Well, heck, uh, there was a repeat of something stupid that happened in uh, Korea here in the States. What happened in Korea? But... There was a Church of Jesus that refused to shut down due to the virus. And almost 60% of the cases of coronavirus in South Korea can be directly linked back to that one church refusing to shut down. Wow. It was in Louisiana or Mississippi. We had another church do the same thing. God will protect us. We won't get this virus. And they were busing people into their church by the hundreds. Well, I had the same thing uh, happen to me. Uh, so, uh, one, of, one of the people wanted to hang out with me, and I told them, uh, dude, social distancing. We're, we've got to, you know, distance ourselves. But he, he was like, oh, because of the way you keep your apartment, which – you know, I, I still do have a lot of stuff, especially since uh, I've had to uh, store some other stuff for my dad to, to hear. But it doesn't look like the Ritz Carlton and everything's spotless. But, you know, I still am trying to keep myself safe. I, the maintenance uh, worker came in Friday to fix my AC. And after he was done, he didn't wear any gloves or anything, and I didn't see him use hand sanitizer. I was sprayed everything with the uh, Lysol that he touched. But, yeah, so apparently they're now having those cases from that church in Mississippi that was doing the same thing, busing people in to go to their masses. Yeah. They were spreading it, too. Yeah. There's been a few people who've died from it, and there's been – a, a massive outbreak in cases, just specifically from that one group of people refusing to do something so simple as refrain from being within six feet of another person and let's not go to big public gatherings. Yeah, but there are – in that aspect, there's actually – if you go on to the other side, uh, you can see some of the uh, preachers and reverends. They're doing the uh, – the safe uh, aspect of it, and they're actually doing what we're doing right now, is we're still doing our videos, and we're doing it apart from each other, We're and they're doing the same thing. They're actually doing their sermons online so everybody can get it. Well, and, and that's, that's kind of what I was getting at is, you know, in today's society where we have enough freedom of media where we can literally – contact each other at will. What is there a need to be within a five foot radius of another person to communicate your ideals? Yeah. That's another thing that I'm kind of scared of. And it's not the, uh, the virus. It's what's going to happen afterwards because 
lot of people a lot of people are going to be afraid to go out and talk to people they're going to be more used to doing stuff over video or texting or calling or somebody or, or whatnot that they don't want that to go see a person in person did i say that, that was true you did uh, say that right <laughs> okay but that that's well, one of my big fears on this it, it's not it's not the people that there's still going to be people out there that need to be social butterflies but there's going to be those people out there that they're so used to this kind of stuff that they're not going to go out and do stuff which they need to do because well Nowadays, it's very easy to do everything, to have everything delivered to you. And a lot of people are going to learn that it is easier. Well, you know, I'm looking at two years before the coronavirus is technically fully under control. The, wow. my, reasoning, my reasoning for that is, is because they're working on a vaccine. And even if they push up production on the vaccine, two years is the long is, is the shortest period of time you could reasonably indicate to have a safe functional vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. So we won't hear from the anti vaxxers after that either. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Maybe lot of all died from the motion. Lot, there is a lot of things that you don't hear about right now because of the virus, which is a kind of a good thing. And that's uh, the transgender people uh, having an upworld war uh, and the anti-vaxxers. I mean, everything is... And that's what I don't understand about society at the time is the fact that we actually have it good. They just want to complain about the small stuff. Well, you know, I've, I've come to the conclusion that once you eliminate a certain number of the, the ills or the problems, people will start to manufacture their own ills and problems simply because they have to have them to feel important. Yeah, most of those yeah. people are mentally unstable, too. Well, it's like what I, what I said last week on our, uh, on our channel last week when we are talking about the First Amendment. There's people out there that don't want you to say certain things, especially like some of my relatives – that decided to say, oh, I'm autistic because I think I have these same things. Since you can't call me a retard. Okay, I want you to realize how the First Amendment <laughs> actually works. Uh, you can have that opinion, and I can still say the word retard. Now, no, be said, if I'm being polite and you ask me nicely, hey, don't say that. I will try to oblige. No, I don't. I don't. But, care. but if you tell me you can't say that to me, you're liable to hear it over and over and over and over again, rather than exactly. It, it, it's 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 a matter of how you approach it with me. If you tell me you can't do that, don't do that. I'm gonna show you I can. But if you ask me nicely, I don't appreciate that. Please don't do that. I will try to respect your wishes. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I was trying to tell somebody, I was like, uh, you, uh, you need to clean up your apartment. Oh, cool, you clean up your apartment. Yeah, so I can show you this and just chunk everything everywhere. Because <laughs> I'm the, an asshole. <laughs> Dave, you shouldn't do that. It's like that cat. Uh, you tell it not to push the cup off the table, and it looks at you dead in the eye and pushes the cup off the table. Yeah. That that only, that only reminds me of a meme somebody sent me the other day. It was, uh, I've been looking for my coffee cup all morning, and then you see a cat sitting on the coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we can uh, stop from there. Uh we uh, just let everybody know we are on Spotify. Uh, it's just Angry Me Production, and you can see our uh, library list. And uh, uh, you can still reach us on Facebook 
we we're putting out I'm putting out a little bit of memes there that are, I think are kind of funny. None of them are really that uh, too sadistic because everybody doesn't want to be sadistic and evil. Uh, we also uh, what was it? Uh, we're on Instagram. I'm trying to put some stuff on Instagram and on Facebook, but most of the time I'm just putting stuff on Facebook. That's where you can reach all of us. I'm going to get everybody to where we can get, you know, a couple of other fun stuff for us. Uh, I think that's about it. I'm David Dickerman. Michael Moffitt. I'm Steve Rubax. And this is Angry Me Production. Thank you for watching, and hopefully thank you for listening. <laughs>